it's funny to me because the atheist argument is always centered around if this is truly a loving and caring and merciful God and a good God, why would he allow something like what happened to your uncle happen? Why would he allow what's happening in Syria to happen? And, and many other examples around the world of, of, of the tragedies that happen, why would there, if there's truly a God out there, allow these things to happen and not step in? And it's, it's profound to see the difference in how people who are actually going through these tragedies approach it and the mentality they have towards God uh, so different than those who are comfortable in their own homes critiquing and criticizing God and, and, and the things that are happening in this world. And you, you see predominantly in impoverished communities all over the world, most of them believe in God. Most of them have religions. You know, the concept of atheism isn't prominent in like war zones. You'll see it for sure, but um, people need it. You know, I will say this. I have a critique for um, some of the approaches of God that I've seen. And it's this like, God is love. God is love. God is love. And I had this customer. So my dad had a restaurant. If I got any public speaking experiences from my dad's restaurant, because I was a waitress there for a long time. But we had this one customer who came in and he's just like, he's like, man, they're always talking about God is love. God is love. And his dad had just taken his own life with a shotgun and his mom was a heroin addict. And he's like, he's like, I don't see any love. So I don't see God. And I can't blame him. I can't blame him. God, God is not all love. No, not when there's war and rape and violence and these child molesters getting away with it and this, this, these atrocities in the world. No, but there's something I urge people to look at and it's the 99 names of God. And I, I challenge anyone to take a look at this and tell me that if there was a God, not saying that there is, right? If there was a God, don't you think that these would be the best qualities? I believe in the Avenger. And there are people who make God only a God of rage and a God of hate and a God of anger. And there are some people who only make God a God of love and a God of mercy and a God of gentleness. But I think God is the full spectrum. God is the illustrious. I mean, take a look at the mountains. God is the giver. God is the taker. He is the healer and he will do, he's the one who will make you sick. You know, and, and I think that when we have such a limited scope of God, it's easy to straw man it. It's easy to be like, nah, God is not love. And you're right. God is not just love. God is a lot of other things too. We need to start changing our perception of God. People love to quote the Renaissance period and its aftermath and influence and quote architecture and art and astronomy and physics and science as, as an argument against God when it's an argument for God. And it's like, change your perception on how you view God. If you love art, then recognize that God is the best of artists. When you look at the sunset and the sunrise every single day, and it looks more beautiful than any painting that Van Gogh can paint every single day. And when you look at the night sky every night with the billions of stars, the beautiful painting that it creates across the canvas of the, of the horizon, that, that's not something light. And so we need to change our perception of God as a whole. So what was your perception of God when you were young compared to how do you view God now? I think the war really gave me a good perspective on God. Because again, I think the God of the West is a God that, you know, we make fun of on Family Guy. You know, like, like the way Family Guy depicts God is the way America will see God. You know, we don't, we Islamically, we're not allowed to put a human face to God because God is not human. God does not fit in our images. I mean, there's this, there is a shrimp in the ocean. The average human has three cones in their eyes. This shrimp has 12 cones in their eyes. So they can see like a billion more colors than we could possibly conceive. So the fact that like this shrimp can see more than we can, and there's God that's even beyond that. Uh, I think it's just, 
I like to see God in the artistic lens. And I love that you brought that up. Very poetic of you, by the way. You should you should write a poem about that one day. <laughs> but I, I heard this lecture by Omar Suleiman, who's pretty much like the dopest activist sheikh guy out there right now in, in the uh, Muslim community. But he had it was the Sira of Jibril, the story of the angel Gabriel, who was the first like creature that was created. Man. When I heard this, my imagination completely blasted open. I mean, he was describing like, he was describing distances that my imagination could not even keep up with. The seven heavens and how there are angels whose feet are in the first heaven and who carry God's throne all the way past the seventh heaven. Like they're describing sizes and colors and ideas that were beyond anything I comprehended. And I, I think our capacity to explore our own imagination is going to contribute to our understanding of God. You know, if you look at some, there are, there are, let's talk, let's real talk, you know, there's, there's these violent, angry Muslims out there who literally believe that they should be killing for the sake of God. They have a very limited scope of understanding. They have a very small view of like what God is if they cannot conceive that mercy is a part of God, that there's only this vengeful, hateful, angry, ugly God out there. You know, and, and, and these people who fight God and, and I just, there's something beyond our imagination that we have to dig into. And this could be the artist in me, you know, but I think that when my faith was taken from, you know, believing in God as, as the most just to then stepping it up as like, there's butterflies in paradise. Dude, butterflies in paradise, can you imagine? Oh my God, and they're golden and they fly about these trees that are that are so large and mark the barrier between heavens and earth and then whatever is beyond that. We have so much imagery around us to really, really conceive not even the idea of God, but at least something bigger than we have. And I think we should use our imaginations more. I think we're all so critical and we're all trying to comprehend things and put them in boxes and make them make sense. But there is a world beyond our understanding. And surely the art of this world proves that. It's funny that you say that because within that story, our prophet, peace be upon him, was one of the first people, if not the first person to ever express distance through time or time. Yeah, distance through time. Uh, something about the angel that's carrying God's throne, his, his shoulder, uh, the distance between his shoulder and his earlobe is a certain amount of months if a, if a f bird were to fly it, uh, something around that. And it's, it's very profound. Our, our religion is very deep and it touches upon almost everything, if not everything, every subject. And it's crazy to see that. Even, the, even that mi minority that we're talking about, that minority that... That that's violent uh, within the Islamic, uh, within the Muslim community. And when you speak to them, they're not knowledgeable about Islam. When you hear their, what they say, it's very similar to what people who hate Islam say about Islam. It's crazy to me. And even within my own life, and it's fun, it's awesome that you said that, or you hinted upon it earlier, that even as your dad grew older, he became more lenient, he became more gentle. And I found that to be true in my life as well with my father and my parents. The more you learn about Islam, the more lenient and gentle and kind and protective you will be over humanity, not harsher.